So what else could we do rather than just using experiential smoothing? What we looked at previously was some have some global trend models, and that is, you can see, just a reformulating of the classical linear regression model, and it's such everything is fine. But what if we want to kind of take the same idea that we did for the exponential smoothing as a mean to cal calculate a rounding mean value instead of calculating a global mean value? Can we do something similar for the trend models? And of course, the answer is yes. We can. Now, that was what we worked with last time, with the f giving what is the predictor relative to the current point in time. So everything is, again, relative to time n. And we also found that we can make iterative updates of fn plus 1, hn, and also thereby get a very quick, at least numerically, efficient way to get the different uh, numbers and matrices and vectors, vectors we need to get an estimate of our parameters compared to having to redo everything. Now, could we do this locally as well? That's the question. And of course, the answer is yes, otherwise I would not present it. But what we did in the local trend model, also in the experimental smoothing, was to have a set some weights when you get further back in time, they get smaller and smaller. That's the same thing we want to do. We still want to have a quadratic um, objective function. And we just want to do the same thing that we use lambda to some power as weight. And then we want to minimize the sum of square prediction errors. So that's the same thing we want to do, effectively. Except that our model now is not a mean value, but it's a trend model. So what we can do is to formulate the trend model as a weighted least squares problem. What we have up here, well, what we have here is the same as we have in the global model. The difference is that we have some weights in here. So we can write it as a diagonal matrix that we plug in to our usual quadratic criteria here. Pretty much just like we did in the weighted least squares solution originally. So we can think of it as a sigma matrix here that contains the inverse of this matrix here as the diagonal. As it only had numbers in diagonal, it's easy to find the inverse. So we have a 1 down here, and then we have 1 over lambda, and then we go all the way up to 1 over lambda to the n minus first power. Given that, we know the solution. So that's easy. Now, we can again, we can decompose our normal equation up here into the fn part and the hn part. And it's quite similar to what it was before. The only difference is that now we have a lambda to the j power, these two places. If we do it this way, we will have to recalculate everything every time we get a new update. That is not, in a real-time application at least, it's not the most efficient way to do things. So what we want to do is to, again, make an update. And if you take the time, you can see that basically what you need is to get the fn. What you need is to add the oldest line. Let's go back one slide here, a couple of slides. Whenever you add something, what you need to is update the oldest element here. So we need to, when n is increased by 1, then we need to add one more element to this sum, so that's the oldest one that goes into that. So this one is fairly easy to comprehend. For the H update here, well, the last bit here is the same as it was before. We just have to look at, you can say, the most recent observation and how is the influence of that at lag zero. And then we have to take our previous estimate and shift that backwards in time. That we can do by pre-multiplying by L inverse. And then we multiply by lambda to also forget part of the estimate from last time. And then, of course, the estimate of theta, you find that the same way, F inverse multiplied by H. If we do this way, we need to find initial values of H0. 
and F0, and the obvious choice is to just use the appropriate matrix and vectors of zeros, and then everything will run. This corresponds to the same approach as in the simple exponential smoothing, where we just initialize with the first observation. There's one but. That is, and we'll get back to the discussion of that, you have to calculate F inverse. So depending on what your system is, you may need to wait a, a while before you can actually solve this equation down here. So for instance, if you want to fit a linear regression, local linear regression model, you need at least two observations in order to estimate that. And then you have no degrees of freedom for the uncertainty, so often you may want to wait a little longer before you provide an estimate. But again, that also depends on the application that you're looking at. Now, again, when n is large, lambda to the n power becomes very small, so it goes to zero when n goes to infinity, and that also means that the first line up here, it converges to a stationary f, because what we add up here is effectively zero every time in relative terms. So with that, we still do the update of h, then we can pre-calculate this inverse, and then we can reformulate by combining these two equations, we can reformulate it and just write an update of the, of the parameter estimate. So just to say, what does this mean? Basically, you get the most current estimate by shifting a previous estimate forward in time. And then what you do, maybe just a quick example, So if we fit a linear regression model, and this is time n, and this is time n plus 1, then what we have to do is to say, how do we shift our parameter vector here, which is an intercept and a slope at time n, up to an intercept and a slope at time n plus 1. Well, what do we have to do? What we have to do is we need to add the slope to the intercept to get one step forward in time. And that is exactly what happens when we multiply by L here. And then we have to look at how is the prediction error. So the observation that came out here could be there, for instance. Then we make an update based on that prediction error that scales with what is the f of the particular point in time. And then it's norm normalized by the information or the precision that we have in f. So if we trust a lot in our model, we make a small update, we have this prediction, then we make either a small update or a larger update before making the next step. So that is what one way to make things easy if you just are having an online application in mind.